She works in a museum, he works in public relations, and neither of them knows a thing about home improvement. Now they've bought a house with an odd room that used to hold a pipe organ. We're going to help them turn this strange space into a sensible study, and we'll teach them how to use some super cool tools like a power stretcher and a knee kicker. Sounds like it's time for DIY to the rescue! Welcome to DIY to the Rescue. I'm Amy Devers. And I'm Carl Champley. Here we are in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we have just three days to help novices Dawn and Jamison Schuler conquer their DIY phobia. The Schulers have a pipe organ room in their house, but they don't have a pipe organ. Ever since they bought this house, they've been wondering how to convert this bizarre room into useful space. So the whole to the Rescue crew is here to show them how to do it. Let's get going. Dawn and Jamison Schuler are 30-something consummate professionals who know a lot about making good business impressions, but not a lot about the business of do-it-yourself home improvement. Tools? What tools? My tools are my laptop, my PDA, and my cell phone. I do not do saws, I don't do drills or hammers or whatchamacallits. When the Schulers read the real estate ad for their home, it said it had an organ room. We thought maybe that meant organizational room, but it quite literally meant an organ room, like a pipe organ. The only way at this point to get from the computer to our files and everything else is to crawl right over the wall so that we can access the rest of the room. That's what we need to change. The plywood floor, really not very comfortable. We thought carpet would be great, but I don't even know where to start. Neither one of us are experts at anything home improvement wise. This door here comes in from the garage, so it insulates from the cold. It's very functional, but it's kind of just blah, really. I would like to see the space that we're gonna work on be a more cozy, warm space where we can both spend some time. Okay, Don, Jameson, we have on hand with us our team carpenter, Nathan Hahn, as well as local contractors, Bill Connor and Tim Brown, to help Great. Carl and I show you guys how to do some handiwork. Great. Great. Now, we've come up with a plan for that pipe organ room that'll bring music to your ears. <laughs> We're going to turn that pipe organ room into a cozy study. First, we'll show you how to knock out that half wall and patch up the drywall so it looked like it was never there. Then we're all going to pitch in and teach you how to install wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Next, we'll help you faux finish that door to the garage with a wood grain to give it a warmer look. Finally, we'll paint and add some finishing touches and your new study will be complete. So should we get started? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, go. Well, let's get going. Let's then. do it. Hey. Contractor Tim Brown preps the wall by turning off the power at the breaker and removing the electrical outlet. It's best to consult with a licensed electrician when handling household electricity. Next, we use a four-foot level and utility knife to mark and score the line indicating the boundaries of our wall tear out. Yeah, well now that we've got the wall scored, it's time to get this drywall out of here. Great. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take this hammer and we're gonna bash holes in a row here in the middle in between the studs. Okay. That's gonna give us a hand holder, a way to get in there and start breaking those Pull it pieces out. off. Okay, great. Make sense? Great. Okay, get your mask on to protect your lungs. And then you should do the honors, sir. Thank you. This is called a reciprocating saw. Sure. We're gonna cut through these studs in the middle somewhere. All right. That'll give us a breaking point where we can pry them from side to side and get them out of there. Okay, this won't fall though if we're cutting out something in the middle? Nope, it's supported on these jack studs here so right. we can pry it off after we're done. Okay, I'll great. do the first one and then I'll pass you the saw. I'm ready. Have you used one of these things before? No, I've never. Oh, it's very exciting. You guys, look at this! What do you think? <laughs> Walk through! Oh my gosh, look at this. No more jumping over the wall. Isn't it great? This is great! Oh my gosh. Okay, but we gotta patch up these walls before we're done. Don't get too excited yet. Before patching the walls, we need to clean up the wall debris. Now, Dawn, Jameson's job was to help me knock the wall out. Your job is to help me patch it up. Okay, great. First thing we need to do is cut some drywall to cover these spots. We're okay. gonna get some measurements for that, okay? okay. You wanna write them down for great. me? Great. Hey guys, I've got your you measurements don't. for the drywall. Wonderful. There we'll you take go. take those from you. All thank right. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. We appreciate it. Transfer your measurements to a sheet of drywall and then make your cuts. 
All right. Okay, let's uh, fit it in right there. Okay. Line it up. I'm gonna show you how we do this. We're using inch and a quarter drywall screws. Okay. They look like this, and we're using this bit right here that just countersinks the screw just enough so that it doesn't stick proud of the paper, and when we mud over it, it we won't see it again. Okay. Now it's time to install drywall corner bead along the outside edges. This evens out the rough corners of the drywall patches and gives us a uniform surface to apply joint compound. The corner bead is fastened into place using drywall screws. And Don, we cover these seams with this mesh tape because it gives some structure to hold the joint compound that we're gonna put over and it helps bridge the gap between all these seams and it keeps the joint compound from cracking. Okay. So, why don't you give me a slice right there? Okay. All right. Good. And we're gonna cover this seam. Okay. It's all the way to the edge? Yeah, right there is fine. All right. Okay, now all the guys have to do is the joint compound and your wall will be ready to prime and paint. Okay. Up next, we're gonna teach you Shulas how to use a knee kicker and a power stretcher. Now these aren't new machines at a gym, they're actually very cool tools for installing carpeting. So check it out until the rescue continues. If you want to learn more about drywall techniques, visit our website at DIYnetwork.com. Welcome back to DIY to the Rescue. Yesterday, we started tuning up the former pipe organ room by removing a half wall. Now it's time for Don and Jameson to face the music and learn how to install carpet. Last night, our contractor, Tim, applied joint compound to the drywall repair to give it a seamless finish. Then Dawn and Jameson put away their laptops and got some paint brushes to cover the wall with a grey coat of primer. Now, installing carpet can be intimidating to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Folks, don't worry and don't let something like this scare you. Just right. remember, you're always in control. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Now, with carpeting, the first step, we need to make sure that the floor is cleaned mm -hmm. and it's dry. Mm -hmm. Now, we've already done that. Right. So the next step is that we need to put tackless strips all the way around the room. Okay. 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 Is that what Nathan's working on? That's what I'm That's working what on. All right. And these all right. are them. Extremely tackless. Oh, They're going to go yeah. around the perimeter of the room, <laughs> keep the carpet nice and tight. Give All a right. good snug fit. Thanks, okay. buddy. You're Sounds welcome. Easy. Thanks. I'll we'll show you guys how they go in. Okay, All right, great. Let's go. Let's do it. The tackler strip usually comes with nails pre-driven partially through the strip. Simply drive these nails securely into your subfloor. Be sure to place the strip so the slanted points are facing toward the wall. Also, leave a gap between the strip and the wall that's approximately two-thirds the thickness of your carpet. Well, our tackler strips are down, and the next step is we need to measure the room and lay out some padding. Okay. Okay. Now we need to take a dimension from the full length of the room. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we need to notch out for a couple of walls. Okay. So we'll get the full pad down first, and then we'll notch that out later. Because it's right. easy to cut the pad in the room. Absolutely. Okay. Be sure to measure from the inside edge of the tackler strip at the longest part of the room. Next, find a large solid surface to roll out and cut your padding. Transfer your measurements from the room onto the padding and use a straight edge and a utility knife to cut your pieces. All right, well, let's roll it up and take it inside. Roll out your padding from the inside edges of the tackler strip. This way the padding won't interfere with the carpet which needs to stick to the tackler strips. Then get ready to staple the padding to the subfloor. We just drive it in like that. Go around the perimeter of the room, putting in a staple two inches from your tackler strip edge, about every foot or so. When joining two pieces of padding, butt the ends together and use duct tape to secure it. Now it's time to cut the carpet. Again, lay it out on a large solid surface and transfer your measurements. You want to give yourself about four to six inches more than the measurements of the room, just in case. Work the carpet into place on the floor. Place your factory cut edge flush against one wall and work the edges you cut into place from there. Use a utility knife to trim the carpet around any protruding walls. Alright guys, well we've got the carpet down, 
Now the next step is to use this knee kicker. Okay. okay. And what this is used for, this is used to actually help us stretch the carpet and take it into the wall and it sits it down onto the tackler strips. Okay. 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 And it's basically a, a unit like this, it actually has a cushion end for your knee. All right. Because okay. you don't want to be kicking this other end. <laughs> this other end here has some, t has, it's quite a sharp edge. And if you see on this dial, I can actually wind it like that and the teeth come out. Oh. Oh. How do you know how far to wind that out? The thickness of the carpet will determine that. Okay. Okay. And um, so it just varies the depth. Okay. And that bites into the carpet, and when you actually kick it, it'll help stretch the carpet towards the wall. Okay. okay. So should we give it a go? Let's go. All right. Secure the knee kicker firmly into the carpet about eight inches from the wall. And kick it like this. Then push the carpet down onto the tackler strips and use an awl to push the excess into the wall edge. Now it's time to use the power stretcher. And this stretches the entire carpet. Like we use the knee, knee kicker to begin with, okay. which, is, which begins it and just gets it against the wall. Sure. But this power stretcher actually stretches the entire room. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one end against the wall mm -hmm. and we're gonna connect this, connect this up and then we're gonna basically crank it in such a way that it'll stretch it. Great. Set the toothy end of the stretcher about one foot from the edge of the carpet and the flat edge against the wall on the excess carpet. So we've got pressure on the teeth, and here we go. Wow. It's really stretching it, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Press the edges of the carpet into the tackler strip while the power stretcher is still locked into place. This way, when the power stretcher is released, the carpet will settle back securely into the tackler strip, giving it a nice tight fit. So it's in. Great. Let's take the pressure off and see if it holds. Look at that. How's that? Nice and tight. Continue using the power stretcher and knee kicker the same way around the room until the carpet is securely attached to the tackler strip around the entire perimeter. Well, Jameson, this is our last step for our carpet installation. Great. We're using this awl to, to tuck it in like this, mm -hmm. and we're using this carpet knife to trim off the excess carpet to the wall, just like that. Up next, the Schulers are going to be getting in touch with their creative side as we teach them how to folk finish their door. When To the Rescue continues. To learn more about the tools and techniques for installing carpet, go to our website at diynetwork.com.